Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. In this short video, I'm going to be helping you do the homework problems on page 100 and 101. So we'll start with the first one on page 100. It's number 22. And there's an A, B, C, D, and it's one of these where you have to rank them. You have to do four different problems, basically. Okay, we're going to assume no friction. It says boxes of various masses are in a frictionless free table. So we're going to assume there's no forces due to friction. And we want to rank each of the following from greatest to least, the net force on the boxes and the acceleration of the boxes. So let's do the net force right now without me writing it down, because I think you guys can see this. Here we have a five kilogram box and we have tug of war. We have five Newtons being pulled to the left and 10 Newtons being pulled to the right. So in the tug of war, we know that the greater amount of force that side's going to win. So we know it's going to end up sliding towards the right. But how much force? By how much? Well, remember, the going to the right, we can say it's positive, And going to the left, we can say it's negative. So we can just add those vectors. All right, so I guess I do have to move stuff around here. I'm trying to hold this down with my weights here. All right, so I'm just going to go and write the first one down. I have on this guy. Uh, to the left of it, I have five Newtons. And pulling it towards the right, I have 10 Newtons. And it happens to be five kilograms. No matter what it is, though, the net force, we're just adding these vectors. So I don't really care how heavy this is. I just need to worry about these vectors. So remember, we can make this going to the left, we're going to call that five Newtons. And going to the right, we're going to call that 10 Newtons. Remember, the plus sign means to the right and negative means to the left. So we just add those vectors. So let's just add, I'm going to write this one first. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll write the left one. Five Newtons plus a positive 10 Newtons. What's negative five plus a positive 10? That's the same thing as 10 minus five. Maybe you would have noticed that here. It's going to be 10 and there's five over here. We're going to have five going to the right. And sure enough, negative five Newtons plus a positive 10 Newtons is a positive five newtons. We know that goes to the right. All right, but it also wants to know what's the acceleration of the box. So now we care how much mass this box has. So remember that F is equal to MA, but they want to know the acceleration. So the acceleration is force divided by the mass. I explained the algebra behind that in the other video. So let's see, I've got five newtons and I care what the mass is. It's five kilograms. And I know a Newton is really a kilogram meters per second squared. So I'm confident this is going to be meters per second squared, which is an acceleration. And five divided by five is one. So I know it's going to zip over to the right at an acceleration of one meter per second squared. Let's look at the next one, B. I've got 10 on this side and five on the right. Let me write that down here. I've got 10 on this side, 10 Newtons and 15, sorry, 15 to the Newtons to the right. Again, because it's going left, I can call that a negative 10 Newtons. I'm just adding vectors. All I'm doing is all in one line. There's no sines and cosines. All on the same x-axis plus the 15 Newtons. That's the same thing as 15 minus 10, negative 10 plus 15. And that gives me a plus 5 Newtons. So I got the same amount of force as I did in the first problem. Okay, so now let's figure out what the force is. I'm sorry, the acceleration. Acceleration is force divided by mass. We just figured out the force. I got five Newtons. This time, this guy is 10 kilograms. This guy is 10 kilograms. So now I got 10 kilograms. Again, Newtons divided by kilograms is acceleration units, mass meters per second squared. And 10 divided, five divided by 10 is one half or 0.5 meters per second squared. All right, let's see, do the third one. I've got five kilograms, and this time I got 10 on the left side, 15 on the right side. So the forces are the same as this guy up here, 10 on the left, 15 on the right. So the net force won't be any different. Doesn't matter what the mass is. Write that down here again. I got the same again, 10 Newtons to the left, 15 Newtons to the right. <clears throat> So I got negative 10 Newtons plus positive 15 Newtons. I got positive five Newtons. So I know it's gonna to go to the right. 
but this time the mass is only five kilograms. It's five kilograms. So what's the acceleration? Acceleration is that force divided by the mass. I got five newtons divided by five kilograms. Five divided by five is one. So I'll end up with one meter per second squared. And there's my direction. It's gonna go to the right. All right, and the last one, now we got a bigger one, 20 kilograms, about 10 pounds. And I got five to the left and 15 to the right. So again, the tug of where I can tell that this guy is gonna win and it'll be a net force of 10, 15 minus five. So let me do that over here. I got 15 Newtons to the right and five Newtons to the left. So. And it doesn't matter which way or I add them up. I can add them up five Newtons plus a positive 15 Newtons, or you can do it the other way around. 15 Newtons plus a negative five Newtons plus negative is the same thing as minus 15 Newtons minus five Newtons, however you want to do it. As long as you end up with the net force is positive 10 Newtons. All right, so just like before, acceleration is force divided by mass. So I end up with a net force of 10 newtons and the mass here this time is 20 kilograms. This guy is 20 kilograms. So I have 20 kilograms. Okay, again, newtons divided by kilograms is meters per second squared. 10 divided by 20, same thing as one divided by two, one half. One half is 0.5 meters per second squared. Okay, so they want you to rank them. I'll let you guys do that. Decide to rank them A, B, C, D, who has the from greatest to least, the net forces on the boxes and the acceleration. The next one I want us to do is number 23. So I talked about this one in the last video, but now we get to do the same kind of thing with the ranking. So notice, we're gonna assume there's no friction. Each block is on a friction-free lab bench connected to a string and pulled by a second falling block. These blocks down here, they're just hanging. Well, if they're hanging, there's a force. There's a force due to gravity. And what's that force due to gravity? Force due to gravity is mg. Now, why do we say mg? Well, remember that little g is really acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so the force always going down. Like right now, I'm sitting on this chair. I have a force pushing down on this seat cushion. And the seat cushion is pushing right back up at me. If it wasn't, then I'd fall right through that chair. So if you're standing on the ground, same thing. Your mass, let's say you're 100 pounds. I'm sure you weigh more than that, but if you're 100 pounds, that's like 50 kilograms. 50 kilograms and the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So we round it to negative 10 meters per second squared. So 50 times negative 10 is gonna be negative 500 Newtons. So what's this? So I have at least 500 Newtons that I'm pushing down. My body is pushing down. So notice that really mass is not the same thing as weight. In science, it's not the same thing. Weight means it's a force and it's usually in Newtons, okay? And mass is kilograms for the SI units, Système International units. Okay, so when we say pounds, yeah, we're really talking about mass. We're not really multiplying it by acceleration due to gravity because otherwise our weight would be in Newtons. All right, so each of these guys are gonna go flying depending on how much force these guys are making it go down, how much force is going down. And they want you to rank each of the following from greatest to least acceleration of the two block system and the tension in the strings. So let's talk about the tension in the strings. I'm gonna draw just this first one. Here's the little guy, he's one kilogram, one kilogram. And there's the string. And I know that there's a force pushing down due to gravity. And the force pushing down is mg. And now you've heard force is just mg. They're talking about the force in the y direction. So that's the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. All right, this is one kilogram. Gra um, acceleration due to gravity is really 9.81 meters per second squared, but we say 10, we round it up in our class here. And so the force we're pulling down is 10, 10 newtons, kilogram meters per second squared, 10 newtons. 
That's kilogram meters per second squared. So the force pulling down is 10 newtons. So there's a tension in this rope right here. If that's pulling it down, the tension, the force of the tension is 10 newtons. It's going down. Force is 10 newtons going down. So I'd give it a negative. So if we're going to assume this, this pulley that it goes on, and here's my table, my table, and there's a box. This force or tension on the rope, assuming that there's no friction here, we're not going to lose any force here. Then I know that the tension pulling it has got to be, you guessed it, 10 newtons. Now it's going to the right, so it's not negative. It's going, it's positive, it's going to the right. But the magnitude, the size of it is 10 newtons. So that's what's going to make this guy go flying. Now for us to figure out what the acceleration is, and here we go, F is equal to MA. So acceleration is F divided by M. Now we want the acceleration of the whole thing. We look at the whole thing as a system. And this first one is three kilograms, three kilograms, but it's attached to this one as well. So I have to include both of them in this problem. Okay, so I've got 10 Newtons, 10 Newtons, but the mass is three plus one, three plus one kilograms. All right, so now I have 10 Newtons divided by three plus one kilograms. Okay, wait, what number am I on? Okay, so, oh, sorry, three plus one is four. So I have 10 Newtons divided by four kilograms. And I know 10 divided by two, sorry, 10 divided by two is five. So 10 divided by four is two and a half. So I got 2.5 meters per second squared. All right, so again, a couple things. What we did was we figured out, well, how much force was this little box because of its weight and weight being a force pulling it down? It's pulling it down by mg. Now that force is that tension on the rope. And that tension is the same tension on the rope on this side of the pulley. This is my pulley here. So great, now I know what force is pulling this 10 Newtons. But to figure out the acceleration, it matters that there's a mass here for the whole thing to be considered a system. So I take the total mass right here, the total. So my mg divided by total, and that's three plus one, the three kilograms from here and the one kilogram from here. So I got 10 divided by four, which is 2.5 meters per second squared. Okay, let's do the next one. I wonder if I can do it without redrawing it. I think I can. You guys can handle that. The next one, I got three kilogram, I have one kilogram here and three kilograms down here. Hmm. So now I have three kilograms here and one kilogram instead in this problem. All right, so let's figure out the mg, the force mg of my three kilogram. This is a three kilogram guy. The three, it's mg. Now I got three kilograms times negative 9.81, so we'll say negative 10 meters per second squared. So I got three times 10, I have negative 30 newtons. So I have negative 30 newtons going down. So now I have negative 30 newtons here. So my tension is negative 30 newtons, okay? So now we wanna know what the acceleration is. What's the acceleration of all that? It's gonna be the fourth times the total mass of my whole system. So I got 30 newtons, 30 newtons, and I've got one kilogram plus three kilograms, correct? And we'll go back to my picture. One plus three is four, yep, still four. Four kilograms total. I know that 30 divided by two is 15. 15 divided by two is seven and a half. Seven and a half meters per second squared. So this guy is gonna be flying down seven and a half meters per second squared. And this guy's been flying to the right at the acceleration, not velocity, acceleration of 7.5 meters per second squared. Maybe you can assume they're not moving at all. And then you find a let go of the one here and then whoosh, makes it go down. Wish we could do this in the classroom. Okay, last one. You may have to redraw this, huh? Oh, looky here. We have three kilograms and three kilograms. Hmm, I wonder if it's gonna go down at all. Well, let's find out. I've got 
just the MG. I think I'll have to turn the page here. Let's look at the MG. The only thing that's going to cause it to fly down would be, would be this box right here. So my force due to gravity is the mass times acceleration due to gravity, which we just say is little g. And I've got three kilograms, negative 9.81 or negative 10 meters per second squared. So I have negative 30 newtons, just like I did in the other one. All right, negative 30 newtons. Now acceleration, remember F is equal to MA. So the acceleration when I have a system is F over the total mass, the total mass. All right, the force here is gonna be the tension down here is going down 30 newtons, which is gonna be the tension of this guy, 30 newtons as well. So it's still 30 newtons. And the total mass is gonna be the three kilograms plus the three kilograms, three plus three, and that's 30 newtons divided by six kilograms. 30 divided by six, I know is five. And my acceleration then is meters per second squared, five. Five meters per second squared. All righty, so there we go. So you guys can rank which one. So you have to do acceleration and the tension. Tension is your mg. Okay, so then the next part I have really short problems is on page 101 and number 25. These guys are all really short. I think you're finally gonna see a kind of a routine happening here. There we go. I tell you in words, acceleration is net force over mass. Normally it says F net, but okay, we'll let them get away with that. Number 25, calculate the acceleration. What is the acceleration? If the mass is 40 kilogram crate of softball gear. Okay, the mass is 40 kilogram. And they, when they pull it sideways with a net force of 200 newtons. Two, 100 newtons, they pulled it sideways. We're gonna assume it goes to the right. If it goes to the right, it's positive. So you just wanna know acceleration. Now, I want you guys to know, just writing these things down from the problem gives you points. Because what we're doing here is we're just translating. All those words, blah, 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 blah. Here's what we need to know. Okay, so then the next thing I do is I write an equation. F is equal to MA. Oh, I want A. Okay, A is the one that's F over M. Okay, F is 200 newtons, which is really kilogram meters per second squared, divided by 40 kilograms. Kilograms cancel out, and I end up with meters per second squared. Okay, can I do this without a calculator? 20 divided by 4 is 5. Okay, so I got 5 meters per second squared. That's my acceleration. Okay, the next one, number 26. Calculate the acceleration of a 2,000 kilogram. See if I can do this on the same page. Here we go, mass, 2,000 kilogram single engine airplane as it begins to take off with an engine thrust of 500 Newtons. So now you know what they mean by Newtons when they're talking engine thrust. So I know the force is 500 Newtons. Either way, you would know because the units of force is Newtons. And they wanna know what the acceleration is. What's the acceleration? Okay. As before, the acceleration here is the force divided by the mass. And the force is 2,000 Newtons at, oops, sorry, no, you guys, I wrote that down wrong. Try that again. All right, the, the force is 500 Newtons, 500 Newtons. And the mass here is 2,000 kilograms. Let me see, I take off two zeros, take off two zeros, I end up with five divided by 20 ah, is um, meters per second squared. So I know that's one fourth, right? Five goes into 20 is one fourth meters per second squared. And so that's gonna give me 0 0.25 meters per second squared. Yeah, you try to avoid the calculator because sometimes my fat little fingers press the wrong buttons. Okay, let's move on to the next one, number 26. These basically are all use, learning to how to plug in this equation, number 26, no, sorry, 27, 27. Calculate the acceleration of a 300,000 kilogram jumbo jet. I better write that down. The mass is 300,000 kilograms. 
just before takeoff when the thrust for each of its four engines, ooh, another one of these. So each of the four engines, I'm gonna write here each of four, the force, each of the four, the force is 30,000 Newtons, 30,000 Newtons. So they're telling us that this guy here in the bottom view has four different thrusters. Have you guys seen a, the space shuttle take off, you know, and all the, all the fumes, gas whoosh, pushes down, which makes this go up, okay? You're gonna learn about action reaction pairs. All right, so really I need to know the total force or the net force. I need to multiply this by four because there's four of them. Each of these, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Each of them is 30,000 Newtons. So together combined, it'd be four times that. So four times 30,000, and that's 120,000 Newtons. Okay, and it asks for calculate the acceleration. So what's the acceleration? All right, well, because F equals MA, now I know acceleration is force divided by the mass. So I'm gonna take this total force of 120,000, I can put it here, 120,000 Newton divided by the mass, and the mass was 300,000, 300,000 kilograms. Okay, so I can take off three zero, three zeros, 100, oh, one more. I got 12 divided by 30. So I end up with using my calculator, I think I did, 0.4 meters per second squared, 4 tenths meters per second squared on that one. Okay, and that was number 27. That was number 27. All right, next one, number 28. Although you're probably starting to get the hang of this. See if I can do it this way. Number 28, calculate the acceleration if you push with that 20 Newton horizontal force against a two kilogram block of a horizontal friction free table. And they give you F is equal to MA, which hopefully you know by now. All right, so we wanna know what is the acceleration? What is the acceleration? And we know that the force is 20 Newtons. Force is equal to 20 Newtons. And we know that the mass is equal to two kilograms, two kilograms. All right, let's see. F is equal to MA, so therefore A is equal to F over M. 20 Newtons divided by two kilograms. 20 divided by two would be 10, 10 times two is 20. So I end up with 10 meters per second squared. You do have to have correctly the units, okay? Must have units, okay? I've seen professors took a lot of points off and not have units because 10 what? 10 pigs? No, 10 meters per second squared. All right, so that's number 28. We're almost done here. And I think you're seeing the pattern of these problems. Hopefully they're gonna seem really easy to you guys here. Calculate the horizontal force that must be applied to a one kilogram puck to make it accelerate on a horizontal friction-free air table with the same acceleration it would have if it had been dropped and fell freely. So you know this one you had to read. I had to read this one twice. I go, okay, I've got a puck. If you guys are familiar to hockey, I grew up in Chicago, Chicago Blackhawks, big deal. All right, so there's a huck, the puck in hockey. And this guy is, the mass is one kilogram. And we wanna know what the force is to make this accelerate whoosh, the same acceleration, same as if we dropped it, as if dropped. Hmm. Well, when you drop something, what's the acceleration in the y direction? What is the acceleration due to gravity? Acceleration due to gravity we know is negative 9.81 meters per second squared on most places on the earth. It might be different on the top of Kathmandu. Um, but it's still pretty close. But we're going to say our acceleration to gravity is negative 10 meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration. They're saying, well, what if it's the same acceleration as if you dropped it? Okay, so here's my acceleration. So now I want the force. Force is mass times acceleration. Here's my mass, one kilogram. And acceleration is negative 10 meters per second squared. 1 times 10 is 10, so I end up with negative 10 newtons. 
Okay, so it's negative 10. Oops, sorry. Yeah, Newton's. That's when they asked for. Number we just did, 29. I just noticed that in mine, I wrote the wrong. Okay, negative 10 Newtons. Here we go. So we got, they wanted to know what the horizontal force was. It would be 10 Newtons. Then the acceleration would be the same acceleration as if you had dropped it. All right, last but not least, number 30. Looking to see if I can use an old page. Number 30, calculate the horizontal force that must be applied to produce an acceleration of 1.8 Gs. Now notice how I put a little g for a 1.2 kilogram puck on a horizontal friction-free table. So they want to know what is the force, what is the force for an acceleration of, and the acceleration is 1.8 g's. So maybe you've heard about these airplanes, well, fighter planes that go 4 g's, how fast they're going. Well, the g is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, so we're going to use the 10. So this really is 1.8 times 10 meters per second squared. That's what they mean by 1.8 Gs. If they, they had said 2 Gs, then it'd be 2 times 10 or 20. Okay, so 10 times 1.8, I just move that decimal place over and I have 1.8 meters per second squared. All right, so now I read. Now, what is it that they wanted to know? What's the horizontal force that must be applied to produce an acceleration of 1.8 G? Now I know what 1.8 G is. For a 1.2 kilogram puck on a horizontal. Okay, so I know the mass is 1.2 kilogram. Okay, so force is equal to mass times acceleration. We know the mass and we know the acceleration. So we can plug that in. The mass is 1.2 kilogram. And the acceleration is 1.8 meters per second squared. I did use a calculator for this one. 1.2 times, oops, wrong thing here. 1.2 times 1.8. There it is, 2.16. So this is 2.16. And what are the units of force? Newtons. And that's it. So hopefully this way we're going to get you guys more comfortable with the homework problems. All right, so that's it, and I'll see you next time.